It's an extraordinary bit of landscape. What we wanted to achieve was this sense of protection and shelter, but allowing you to remain fully immersed. And in doing so, create a, a stillness that allows you to be aware of the, the rise and the fall of the tide, the birds on the marsh, and you know the passing weather. The Salt Marsh House is conceived as a delicate steel frame pavilion that floats above a meadow of wild grasses and overlooking a tidal salt marsh. It's designed with a kind of simple, long dining living space, which is then framed by three smaller spaces, a simple kitchen, bathroom and bedroom. The building is then surrounded by a, a kind of large perimeter veranda that opens out onto a larger terrace down one end. The client had owned the site for a couple of years before they approached the practice, but they'd been living in the area and walking in this landscape for almost 20 years before that. The client sent us at the very beginning some things that they loved, and one of them was a beautiful image of a sculpture by Peter Collingwood with these very fine taut threads that made a kind of cat's cradle. And that was something that was a strong visual image we had for the building. And she also showed us a beautiful image of Japanese farmhouses. And when they approached us, they were very particular that any structure that did come to this site needed to feel like it had just been placed. It needed to feel like it was just floating above the landscape and it didn't involve heavy groundworks or kind of heavy foundations. The client's very interested in architecture and design culture generally. She has an interest in light and how it's crafted and not just flooding a space with light. And as a kind of keen gardener, I suppose there's this interest in the seasons the weather, landscape generally, and we kind of felt if we could meet all of those expectations then we were on good course. And what's been quite nice about this building is to see the way in which the people have come in and started to use it. They filled it really beautifully with art and furniture in a way which has given me real pleasure. And they're using it for everything from living to cooking, for work and for parties. And. I think the, the long dining table kind of speaks to that. It's a place where people can come together, they can share time, they can share a meal, they can share ideas. This was a, an opportunity to experiment with something altogether different and really explore this idea of lightness. It's a steel framed building and we really enjoy that tensile wiriness. It's almost like the spokes on a bicycle wheel. We asked Simon, our engineer, uh, what's the smallest and thinnest column you can make and how can you make a real cat's cradle out of those columns? And so I think the technical resolution of that was very difficult, but at the end of it, I still get a lot of pleasure when I go down there and feel the lightness of the structure. Internally, the building is lined with timber, and it's, it's ash, and then externally, it's a coir. We wanted to have this roof that had an almost kite-like quality. It's like this kind of big umbrella that creates this shelter but allows a kind of view out beneath it. When the landscape is being drenched by rain, water comes off the eaves in, in all directions. It feels like a curtain. And then when the weather's good, um, the building's been designed to kind of fully open up, almost like a building in a tropical environment, and just kind of let that breeze run through and allow the, the inside and the outside temperature to equalise. During the design, I think it, it was about being very conscious of the, the materials and, and how we were using them. The roof, the walls and the floor are all very highly thermally insulated, and all the windows are, are triple glazed. The steel frame again has been you know, highly engineered to use as little steel as possible and they're very small profiles and they're hollow sections. The copper in the roof is fully recycled and it's recyclable and the linings are all made of timber. Like all projects it's, it's a collaboration. Collaboration requires good listening and that's listening to your client and that's listening to the site. As an architect, you have to make sure you understand them, you have to understand their situation, and almost forecast forwards what their needs might be. And if you can have the confidence to allow a building design to come out of discussion, then we, we find that can be very positive. 
this building embodies home when you go there and either outside on the deck or sitting inside, you find yourself just looking across the water and seeing the weather changing and to feel that you're immersed in nature but also protected and sheltered. For me, that's a strong sense of home.